so we don't have to how do we even decide? Begin? Yeah, so we can introduce this. So, what can we call the show first of all? What how do we say we're going to do? Good show? morning. This is the James and Oris show. It is a talk <laughs> show in which we discuss entertainment news. As some of you might know, both of us are analysts on the popular Smooth FM Grapevine show every Thursday um, morning. Yeah. And now this is like, um, let's just call it a part two. <laughs> of yes, some, or, or like of, a spin off. A spin off, exactly, yes, grapevine. of what happens on the Grapevine, yes. you know, featuring myself, Oris, and the great James Silas. Yes. So, yes, um, today, which is our, this is our first, our inaugural show, so. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We are talking. Um, I think we should we should talk a little bit about the new video from Whiskey. Um, as you know, his first video, his first single of the year, "Bad to Me," showed up. Um, I think a few months ago now, two months. Yeah, yeah, the song, right? Yeah, the song. Yes, I think mm. about two months ago, and the video just came. I think three or four days ago, and it's mm. now on YouTube. And I think one of the first things to say about <clears throat> about um, the song and even the artist is, it's an I'm a piano song, Vibe, yeah. which. For me, to be honest, you know, um, it kind of feels like Whiskey isn't quite a leader <laughs> anymore. Of course, I, James is laughing because he feels like, you know, I'm wrong. But the truth is this, you know, I think of when we talk about Nigerian music, we think of three big boys, so to speak. Mm. Whiskey, Davido, Bonaboy. You can arrange them whichever order you want, from around the world, whatever you want, you know. But I think that one of the things that their position should give them is a latitude to do stuff differently you know and so when they don't take that opportunity to do stuff to do things differently i think we can say at least i am saying that it appears that they are not living up to the status they have earned okay. so whiskey <clears throat> great artist fantastic pop star you know popular as hell you know had the hit with essence and since then it's been like oh what's happening next and then the next thing we get is bad to me you know and I don't think that it's a song, to be honest, that has any chance of being a big hit. You know, because it's with kid, it's going to be a hit. So let's just say a minor hit. That's the best way I think you can put it. But it's an Amapion it's an Amapion song. There's nothing he's doing on the song that you haven't heard before. And in my own view, that I haven't heard done better as well. So as everybody knows, the man of the moment is Ashaken. Ashaken is deeply <laughs> is deeply invested in the Amapiano mixed with afro beats or whatever it is mm. uh, you know with the fuji music here with you know <clears throat> he, just, he has this mixed thing going on but a chunk of his production of the beats he's working with is yama piano sound now because he has he has had an album that is super successful i do not think that a song in the same kind of mold has any chance of shifting the attention away from him from who Ashake? Of, from Ashake, yes yes I'm, that's what I'm a saying. A song like whiskey. Song? No, no. I'm saying a song that is also based basically on mm. the Amapiano sound mm. would not have a huge chance of shifting Ashake from that is number one to number ten position at the moment. And mm. whiskey's song is a song that is backbone is Amapiano. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So I'm trying to mm. say is that you are not going to displace. It's like a candle under the sun. Mm. The candle is not going to displace the sun mm -hmm. you know they are both exiting lights mm. if however you showed up there and you put in a box where there is no light inside mm. within that box there's going to be darkness right and so the light okay. cannot shine in there so it's not the same they're not working on the same principle anymore <clears throat> okay so so here's why I, <clears throat> I don't think okay so this is not what we're like i don't think you're trying to compare them no right? no not trying to compare them I'm trying, trying to, to I'm trying to say different scenarios as per, as per um the effects or I'm impact of say, this whiskey's who, single right Whiskey has a single out now. Mm. What are the chances of that single being a major hit? No, for I don't. I don't think the song. That's if, that's if the song, if the song yeah, yeah, if the song. No, no, I agree with the question. So it, it, my own answer would be: I don't think this song. Um, mm -hmm. It's not even the question of the chances anymore. It's been like two months already. Mm. If a song is going to be a hit, if a whiskey record is going to be a hit, you would know by now, right? It has to be instant. It, it doesn't even have to wait for any. Yeah, true. So let's all agree that this song did not pop or did not is not a hit or just did might not even go beyond where it was what what one that um, actually um <coughs> observed or what i see about this particular record is the fact that the first time i heard it, it was just even just in a no i couldn't even stand it I, I just it was like no but after a while i kept hearing 
over and over again. I'm okay, this song is not really bad. Yeah, it's not really it's bad. Not, and then bad. even watching the video, I see okay, okay. But like I said, for a song, look, it's a hit record is almost instant in terms of not always, but um, I'm not saying I almost not always, instant almost. in terms of like if you hear a song that will, this song will go far, it just it just sort of hits you in a certain way. Or if you if you're going to like a song, the first. The first few times, the right, first sentence you just listen from that song, you just uh, love the song, you know. <laughs> I know I agree, sir, but, but, <laughs> but, but in this case, I mean, this is coming from somebody who has given us like a lot of great Hits, music, yes. right? Um, even coming off the heels of um, Essence, mm -hmm. you know. So, I also understand the part where, even as music listeners, you expect so much from an artist, like we want him to give us something bigger than Essence, something better than Essence, but. Sometimes it, it, it probably doesn't even work like that. Now, where I have a challenge, or where my own listening might be with the record is, it sounds like this. If it sounds like a song of the last album, you know, it sounds like something that does it. That's how that's how it sounds. It sounds before, like something before, of the last, I don't. I don't think record. that I'm a piano was a thing when Made in Lagos came out. So I don't know that it can sound like a song from that album. Uh, no. So what I mean in that instance is like this song has the same vibe with essence and it's not necessarily about my piano yeah it has the same vibe same laid back flow sound but like that is smile. No, every kid song has his yeah so that's nowadays, what i'm saying it's not... so it sounds like a song that would have passed <coughs> as one of the songs on that any of those albums that's how it feels it doesn't feel like a new it doesn't feel like a new <coughs> record like a new it's not a new nothing different from what yes I'm good so that's exactly but that's what i'm saying but the why it is not different mm. that's what i'm trying to establish here that the reason why it is doesn't look like it's different mm. it's not because of whiskey it's because he's following a trend that everybody already knows is going on at the moment and my piano has been dominant for about a year or two years now mm. and in that time we've seen all kinds of things done with my piano whiskey didn't do anything new with my piano mm. so that's why it looks like okay this song you've heard it before but it's not a whiskey fault it's that everybody else is doing the same thing he's doing that's why i said earlier that you know what people like him have the chance to do more when he now choose to do less you identify that but there's nothing spectacular about what i'm hearing the first time you hear and that's why i agree with at least a bit with the thing you said about mm -hmm. sometimes you hear a song that you know that ah damn the first time you hear last last mm. bonner boy song it just gets you like okay like ah, because the way it starts the fact that he sampled the what's it called the yes, Tony Braxton Tony stuff it just it's not an piano it just feels like it's something different from what you are hearing it's familiar but it's different from what is on ground at the moment Mm. S and what's not essence, sorry. Bad to me doesn't have that thing. Bad to me has a if I walk from here to there, one bus stop is playing something like something that. like that already. You get? And like I said, he's not doing it in a way he's not doing the um he's not doing the song in a way that's not been better done. Mm. I think that like I said, Ashake is the man who is doing the best the most okay. he's doing the most i said you really love ashake's music <laughs> no it's not i don't so know that ashake, i think i don't want to say love i think for ashake yes i mean i feel like he just has a new vibe right now ashake has yes a new but amapiano piano is using really let's not right forget so the basis of his of one of his songs all of his hit songs are amapiano. piano all of them are. the so basis now, the i don't know if i tum, about tum, tum, is Amapiano. Piano, piano. I, I, I try to see more of um traditional <laughs> more about more of traditional um vibe with a blend of that on my piano yeah, so, so here's because the thing. it's heavy on like fuji should i say fuji you know it is fuji it's fuji that's what it is so because you know fuji, that, he's that a muslim and fuji music the origin of no, fuji music. About, um, no wait i'm no let, 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 let me know, let me explain let me explain what i mean by yeah. that fuji music it's origin mm. when the embarrassed are doing this thing like in the i think 70s or 80s mm -hmm. Its origin is from the early morning call for prayer in, okay. in Islamic Kurdish tradition. That's okay. where it is from. Okay. It's from that sound that Barista developed what became Fuji. Okay. So I'm telling you now that so somebody who is Yoruba, who is mm -hmm. young, because Fuji music now became like the music of young people in mm -hmm. the early nineties. Mm -hmm. You get somebody who is Yoruba who grew up on that sound, who is Muslim. Do you get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's reinforced. Okay. On the one hand, there's Fuji music that is just you just hear it on the street. It's, on the other hand, you're also Muslim. So it means that the tradition is directly into your veins. Mm. So why I say that Ashake is not just that. Why I say that the basis of his stuff is uh, I'm hearing is because the production itself, mm. the beat, mm. the beat, the drum pattern is on my piano. Yeah. His vocals is Fuji. Mm. You understand? So yeah. that's kind of like the mix. So if you want to put the vocals ahead 
of the beat. Of the beat then you yeah. say, of course, Fuji is like what is mm. dominant, you know. But if you're thinking about the production as the basis of everything, mm. then you say it's a piano. That's what okay. I'm trying to get at. Okay. Of course, there's all of this other mix because it's not like it's one thing. Mm. All these mixes are there, but I think the two things that you can say in Ashakai's music is Fuji influence mm -hmm. and my piano beats. Those are the What's your ho hottest, um, like your favorite record right now uh, in Nigeria? Hmm. Always very hard. <laughs> always very hard because <clears throat> at any given time, I'm always into listening to a bunch of songs. But, um, mm. okay, so there's a new guy. I don't know anybody. I don't know if mm. anybody knows about mm. this guy, to be honest. But I attended um, a, an album listening a few weeks ago uh, of a guy called K-Style. Um, okay. And he has a song, Tamale. Okay. Out of like, on the same level, K, K card. Mm. And it's a song they have. It's called, oh God, I think it's called Blessings. Okay. And it just has this... Those product code, if you say product code boys, those product code boys, I don't know. There's something mm. in their water these days, man. Okay. They are really doing stuff. So there's a okay. song that both of them have called uh, Blessings. Okay. That I think is just a fantastic, fantastic piece record, of... Record, yeah? Well, yeah record. Okay, so guys, you can check <coughs> it out. Go and look for the song. K-Style. K-A-E-S-T-Y-L-E. K-Style, mm. yes. And um, uh, Anomaly. A song titled Blessings. Really, really good. In fact, the entire EP, is, which is called K-Study, by mm. the way, is good. But that song in particular, just... Yeah, okay. So that's what I listen to these days. But what's, what's yours? So for me, it's... Um, <coughs> Um, so it was Rush for <laughs> yeah, yeah by Arrestar for for like a couple of weeks a couple of weeks but just recently just recently <laughs> like I have just day. fallen in love <coughs> yes like day before yesterday or yesterday I've just fallen in love again now with um, my friend is it my friend or hello friend oh the Johnny Drew jam my Johnny Drew and um, Don Jazzy yeah. I mean Don Jazzy and Johnny Drew have worked on a record before um, what's on the record on a record, record. Never uh, on a song I do not no no not even on production no, no. on, okay. on the part class we are featuring Don Jazzy um, on, on, on Johnny Drew's uh, this is his last album or last two albums um, mm. I can't write title right now but I will see if I can write it on the screen for you guys but yeah so but after that one over, over, yeah, I think that one is over. Over, mm. over, over. So, I didn't really like that one. I mean, at first, when I listened to the first time, I liked it, but after a while, playing back to back, you know, some other time, that's how I coming born to me. I now just, but this very one, I didn't think I'll be bored of. So, I loved the fact that they did that whole um, acoustic version or acoustic, um, you know, rendition of the song. The one I saw um, on Instagram. Recently. Yes. Mm, so, the way it felt, the melody, the. Oh, and that, that's, like, that, that's the, the, the softness of Johnny Drew, like this, the coarse thing that, yeah, that he has. This, on that, so it was just fantastic. So I <laughs> wish that that song set was even recorded originally like that. You yeah. know how you now like like a regular a rendition thing I did for social media? You now love it more than the song yeah, that was well produced. produced. Do you understand? Yeah. So, but, I mean, that just sort of gives you an opportunity to connect more with the song, to listen more, to actually now understand what that song was actually um, made for, meant for, you know. So, but that's by the way. Moving on, Moving on, let's talk about Moving on. Moving on. Kanye West. Kanye, I mean, my guy. The, the, the madness, <laughs> I want to say in that quotes, is... <laughs> in quotes, the madness that's been going on social media, um, some people versus against, some people for, some people, you know, want to kill. In fact, some people want Kanye West, Kanye West's um, head <laughs> on the table. Um, I mean, yeah, this is a it. man who's talking, who's barely or just basically expressing himself the way he feels about various situations i mean sometimes can you can you i don't think can can you do an interview and not have something or can you even do anything that you will not call him out for is it possible to, to can you do anything normal is it possible um, i don't know I, I i've always felt like when there's so much of anything it can just never be neutral you know can he has too much fame it cannot be neutral too much money cannot be neutral too much rather intensive opinions can never be neutral you know but I think this particular one, uh, which is, of course, I think the real issue, I mean, it's a protracted one. There's the fact that he first had that thing he said on Instagram, actually from Instagram, where mm. he posted something from PDD and said um, that DD was being controlled, I guess, by Jewish people or something. <laughs> I think that's kind of how he said it. <laughs> anyway, they banned him there. He came to Twitter and had a bit of time, and then he said the thing about death country on Jewish people banned him from there again and then later <laughs> and then nobody wanted to like you know give the guy a platform and then suddenly he found himself on drink champs with the rapper nori and poof, all hair went was went loose there you know <laughs> a three hour 23 minutes uh, 26 Man. minute conversation Do you know what it takes to record <coughs> for three hours i mean have a conversation with somebody <laughs> somebody for over well that's the thing hours. about uh, that's the thing about kanye wow. too brilliant too opinionated mm -hmm. you know i honestly believe i 
I have to say it that that man is a genius. One and two, he has some troubling opinions. And in this particular interview, the one particular that I feel like was troubling is the one he said about George Floyd mm. and how he died. <clears throat> he was quoting Candace Owens, the Candace Owens um, documentary, not, I guess, the New York Times or anybody else, but Candace Owens. Um, that, I felt like, was a big thing. But I think that in a 3-hour, 23-minute conversation, to take out this 2 minutes and say, you know what, this guy is insane, I think it's not fair. That comment was wrong, but across the breadth of what he discussed over that 3 hours, I think the man said a lot of things that if you are interested in the entertainment scene, if you're interested in race relations, if you're interested in the relationship that happens within the business space in the US, you have to think that that interview was an important document. And I saw it like a few hours after it was released. In fact, I think I almost saw it live when Nori was streaming it on YouTube. And it was clear even at then that they were going to take down that interview. And lo and behold, I think five, six hours after, they did um, Revolt, which is owned by PDD. And by the way, I actually insulted PDD on the, on the, on the thing <laughs> itself, took it down, you know. And so, but luckily, thank God for the internet, all kinds of people who, who watched it, I guess like me, but I didn't upload it. People downloaded it and said to upload it after, <laughs> after the fact. Mm. <laughs> so you can still find it online. But anyway, like I was saying, yeah. So the three minute bit or five minute bit where you talk about George Floyd, ridiculous. But the man said something I think is important. <clears throat> he tried he clarified he clarified what he meant by the death content he said on Twitter. He said he admitted that you know what, there's a way you can interpret that as being anti Semitic. Mm. But generally speaking, that's not really the case with him because he didn't actually mean death. You meant death con, which is like a more protecting yourself against Jewish people than attacking them. That's one. Two, he also said that he had been screwed over by a bunch of um, business partners and friends and all of them were Jewish. And so he felt like something was happening there that he didn't quite like. Then, make it more importantly, he also said that it looks like Jews own the black voice. And I think for me, that's an important thing to talk about. He mentioned how, um, he, so there's a part where he was saying, he said, you know what, I'm a, um, I'm a fuck your bitch. I'm a kill this nigger. And he said that he sang that for a bit. And then he said, oh, is anybody in the studio going to bet with him that if he checks Apple Music, the top three, songs on apple music rap chats is able to see one or two songs that address that same thing he just talked about that somehow these songs that harm the black community the people who are benefiting the most financially from it are jewish people and mm -hmm. you can argue that you can say you know what but what i don't think is fair is to say that you know what shut the man down because of that because think about it in reality if you think about the major uh, media corporations in the us and trace the ownership or the lineage, you would find somebody who is Jewish, either as a founder or as a CEO. Now, I'm not saying that you people are bad or anything because of that, but I'm saying that if this is this man's experience, him saying it should not be the reason why you are trying to like cancel him or don't give him a platform to speak. He even now went, he went on a show later, um, featuring um, uh, rather hosted by a guy by the journalist Chris Cuomo, and he tried to explain what exactly he meant. And Chris was trying to like shut him down. And you know, and that interview ended in a very abrupt yes. manner because he's just like thank you I think last thing this he said like thank you for telling me what to think you get and so my own view is this is that Kanye I I wish he was a little bit more sophisticated in the way he addresses certain issues but what do you mean sophisticated? Well, I feel like he's already sophisticated already that's why no, that, yeah, that, no, that's maybe if it was I a bit think... a bit conservative uh, about no, how I, he addressed yeah I'm just you know what it's like okay don't come and say I mean, he admitted it on the show. On the show. Mm -hmm. Don't come and say death con on Jewish people, for instance. If he said, you know what, over there, and he said it actually, just that he just, other things have crowded everything. He said, over the past two years, mm -hmm. he's had up to like 50 dealings mm -hmm. with people who have screwed him up, his friends and his business partners. All of them have been Jewish people. I'm not saying that this now means everybody's Jewish is evil, but you need to hear this man out and the thing he said about the and owning Kanye the black has not voice screwed anybody, he has not messed anybody no. up he has not ruined anything now if now if anybody feels that way about Kanye they can also say that and they should also, people should not be shut down as well but mm. let Kanye say what he's saying and that thing about owning the, the, the black voice it is I don't know it's very true he said something like, okay another point he made was that if you look at it the people who are the black people how many black people who own record labels in the US have Jewish artists under them and it's like there's probably none did but almost every black artist signed to a Jewish record label. Mm. 
so I'm just saying, you know, this is this is a thing to think about. And he also said that you know what? It wasn't even a case of he hating Jewish people. The mm. fact that he was jealous about them, that they've gotten their act together. <laughs> he wished his own people too could get their own act together. Did you see uh, I don't know if you saw um, this guy, um Charlemagne's um comments about Kanye being pro white. Char and how he's trying to um how he's trying to grease or what the word is used, trying to appeal to white people to like him or like to you know to to i don't know if it's to love him or to maybe just, more or less he wants to be attractive or appeal to white people now that's what all the efforts that he tried to do like marketing to white people and all of that you know there's, there's a thing about of course it's them charlemagne that i that mm -hmm. i don't like okay for somebody who i think sometimes can be very can be very direct mm -hmm. and reasonable mm -hmm. He says things that, for me, I think they are incredibly myopic. Okay. Too short-sighted. The mm. man just doesn't see far. Mm. There's an interview with, I think maybe the first interview that Kanye had with Charlemagne from 2013, like a while back. Back here. Look, watch an interview this year. Mm -hmm. At least maybe not this year, with all of the crisis around Kanye. Mm. Maybe watch it maybe last year or two years ago, when there was not a lot of whatever around Kanye, you know. And you will understand that. Charlemagne is just when Kanye is thinking at twenty years ahead. Mm. Charlemagne is in last year. Mm. They are not even on the same on the same plane. You know, Kanye was trying to explain to this guy why it was important for him to have money, why it was important for him to be able to like you know what get resources so that make he can make certain decisions. And all of the while, what's his name? Charlemagne is trying to put him into this hole where you're like, okay, boy, you should be comfortable where you are. But that's not a Kanye. That's not Kanye. Kanye. So. If you see the interview, like I said, anytime recently, mm. you'll be like, okay, wait, oh. At the time this guy was saying this thing, when Kanye was saying this thing, it mm. was hard to understand what he was talking about. Mm. Years later, it's entirely true. Mm -hmm. So you take that interview, take the interview he did with Forbes when they announced him a billionaire, which mm. he had been looking for for like three years mm. before Forbes and I agreed to, to say, you know what, actually you're a billionaire. Mm -hmm. You know, take those two interviews and you realize that, okay, Kanye was right. And oh. think about it, where we are, wait, sorry, mm. where we are now at this moment where we are talking about Kanye not being given a platform mm. for anybody who isn't as wealthy as Kanye West, who isn't as incredibly famous across race, mm -hmm. across class, across gender mm -hmm. as Kanye West, it won't take a long time for that person to be broke or to be entirely um, just discarded. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that because Kanye knew Kanye had been amassing fame, amassing influence across different business um, industries, mm -hmm. amassing money. So you cannot, they cancelled four of his shows, you know, after I, after I made some of these comments, mm -hmm. four of his shows and stadiums in the US. They cancelled the t-shirt line he wanted to bring out. Mm -hmm. There are people who, those actions will cripple them financially. It cannot cripple for Kanye West. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. JP Morgan Chase, the bank, mm -hmm. kicked him out of their services. And this is a person who had only $40 million with them. Mm -hmm. Those things will like, there are people who, it will just give them a year or two. Bam, it's gone. Kanye knew all of these things. He has amassed so much power that no matter what you do to him now, Kanye will be fine. <laughs> so, so I'm just I'm trying to say that you know. So Charlemagne will say all of make all of these comments. But if Kanye wasn't valuable to America mm. as a whole, not just to rap community or just to black community, mm. you know, it would be very easy to just like quench this guy's flame. But Kanye is that's what I'm saying. Kanye is thinking ahead. The interview that he did this year. I can assure you that if that thing stays on, hopefully mm. YouTube doesn't take everybody's who's posting it up. If that thing stays on in five years' time, people look at that interview and say, you know what? That man was right. Mm. So, like I said, he has questionable uh, decision making skills sometimes. Mm -hmm. But overall, don't just don't don't fuck with Kanye. That so, man knows what he's doing. Yes, I, I totally I mean I just feel like for me it's always about opinion. This is Kanye West's opinion. Yes, this is what And means. I don't think he should be shot down or shut up because of what he feels or what he thinks about the situation i mean he's not kind of always right i mean like we can yeah yeah remember that his interview with sway where sway was when doing yes. his, um, yes. you know where he was arguing and well recently he's admitted that look yes he said, wrong no no yeah exactly he said he yeah. said yes he said uh, uh sway had the answers <laughs> yeah you know sway mm -hmm. didn't have the answer that you know and when he was saying it he admitted that you know people are going to get come away from for saying yeah. that you know but the thing is but you know what the truth of the matter is that in that interview in that mm. in that experience the problem with kanye was like i said 
again on sophistication mm. just reacting like that to somebody trying to interview you calmly mm. just like you ain't got the answer so you know just like that kind of <laughs> just has outburst boom from like zero to hundred <laughs> once you know and like just shout shouting you know <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that when you think about it both of them are right the thing um so was saying was that can you empower himself you know what that mm. in other words it's like you have these ideas you have the kind of money you are can mm. invest you can make some of these things happen and <clears throat> Kai was trying to let him know that look, there's the way the world is structured. Mm -hmm. It's like, look at me and you today. Mm -hmm. If somehow our, um, I don't know, my father, my, my great grand grandfather, we just said, ah, the guy left this huge amount of money for mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. um, for me, oh, I'm now I'm a billionaire. Like, okay, one thing I want to do is I want to buy a bank. Mm -hmm. I have the money, I probably could buy that bank. Yeah. But before I'm able to buy that bank, there are people I would have to go and specifically me to tell me what I need to do to be able to buy that bank. Mm -hmm. You know? I'll probably have to go to CBN, fill a bunch of forms and everything. Yeah. There is that structure. So Kanye's point was that you need to be able to work with structure that's already established, you know. So so he was like, but you're Kanye, you should be able to do these things. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, you don't have the answers because I'm the person who's in this position. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I should be the one who's telling you how it works. Yes. So years down the line now, after he's worked with those people, he now knows what the structure is. True. So he can now come and tell, say, he can now say, you know what, Sway, you were right mm -hmm. but the fact doesn't mean that when he said what he said it was wrong it was he wrong. wasn't wrong mm. kai was right too at the time you know mm. the thing is that you've got is exactly that you need to get to a particular stage where you can now in quotes empire yourself the way Kai um, so wanted, so wanted him to, to at that, that time kai couldn't have done it because who knew him in the fashion industry mm. you get he needed to play there first learn the ropes then he can empower himself and so that's what he was saying now that okay now that they shut down some of these things He's not trying to work on, okay, how can he like build factories? Mm. Which, of course, is one of the first things you need to do if you want to own the entire production, the entire production chain. chain. And, of course, something that is also very important is distribution. Exactly. And this is something that people like the LVMH, the guys, the Louis Vuitton people, have already. Yes. You get? Yes. If Kanye releases a, I don't know, a bottle of perfume or something yes. in the US, do you know how long it will take before it will come to Nigeria? Of course. But if it plugs into the LVMH... Uh, it will almost be going to be here. Okay, let's. Um, <coughs> so quickly before we move on to um, talking about artists and businesses, yeah. I wanted to talk about um, and two other. But before that, um, still on the um, you know platform of artists or it's people. Mm -hmm. No, no. So Keep on. talking. Yeah. Okay. And that's as a uh, platform of on the, on the uh, you know on the aspect of artists having an opinion on celebrities yeah. speaking their mind on several issues. Issues, yeah. Who in Nigeria do you think um, might fit that bill in terms of when you look at how Kanye is very vocal and very, you know, can express himself however he wants? Yeah. Do we do you think we have anybody around this on this part of our our own climb that, you know, might to an extent be able to or stand or speak clearly and loudly like Kanye does? We just, of course, we don't have a single person who can hold Kanye's list. level of. We can, we don't have one person. You don't, you don't think um, um, Sean Kuti does that? Well, the problem with Sean Kuti is that Sean Kuti is not a mainstream star. Hmm. No, it's fact. I was once in a. I remember I was. He's not a mainstream star. Yes, I would explain. I was once in an. I was once in a concert in Adiba Moral in um, mm -hmm. VI, mm -hmm. Freda Palace and whatever you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, it was a kind of what who was from, I don't know the sponsors now, but anyway, um, Femi mm. and Sean, I think they both played that night or something. Mm. Um, there, and I was with a friend of mine who was from Germany at the time, I think mm. he was here on some kind of research thing for university in Germany. And one of the things he said was that he was just, just watching the space and how they were both received, mm. and it was like, how ah, that it looks to him like the Kutis are more well received in Europe than that they in are Nigeria. in Nigeria, okay. Just watching, I mean, he's somebody who was attending their concerts in, yes. of course, in Germany and yes. in Europe, you know. Just watching how stuff happened over here mm. in Lagos and VI there. And it was like, ah, huh, it feels that way. And I think that's entirely true. So okay. today, if you op if you put on, we could listen to radio for like, I don't know, 48 hours, back Are to back we? to back. You how many times sing, did you hear? You won't hear a oh, single okay. Shionkuti song. So that's what I'm saying, okay. that he's not in the mainstream. Kanye's music is like part of the fabric of Americana now. Mm. So so that's what I'm saying. So that's the difference. So when you said, who do I think? My my, my thoughts were, who is a major mainstream star or mm. act that has that kind of vocal, um, that's kind of strong opinions. And I'm saying that we don't have somebody like that. Mm -hmm. However, there are people who I feel like they are personality could have lent that to them if they were only 
use it for that. So should I purpose. guess Bonner Boy? Bonner Boy, certainly. Even, I think Bonner Boy, he has personality to be that kind of a person, mm. but he doesn't care as much. Oh, he's not talking to the Nigerian um, media as much. No, not even that. Kanye, Kanye was also he was on, on Twitter when he did his own. Mm. <laughs> that's where he, he said something on Twitter or on Instagram, and that's spiraled into the major media. Bonner Boy media. also tweets. Yes. My point doesn't tweet anything about does one ever tweeted anything about uh, what's it called about the state of our nation, for instance. Yeah, he, he did. It. He does even with Please the tell me when. October twenty. Remember um, the October twenty thing that for weeks everybody was looking for Bonner boy and we didn't see him. He showed he up later. Tweet. Wait now, he showed up later yeah. and said that his mother was sick and so he was away and then he posted a bunch of billboards, but a random tweet. Or a random post mm. from Bonner boy that's addressing a particular issue. As well as been out he did. He tweeted about suit. In Port Harcourt. About suits? Yeah. It's really about the suit um, situation. When was this? Yeah, last year, I, I believe, as well. Anyway, I mean, for me, that's, I don't think that that's like, that's not a, that's not a Kanye West thing in my mm. own view. That is more, I mean, it's, I mean, like it's, it's good. Mm. It's good. It's good. I'm not arguing mm. that it's a good thing, you know. But that's still a, you can say that's a PhD, it's not a national thing. Okay. Asu Strike is a national thing. thing. I've not heard any of well, Everybody probably got it. tired of talking about Asu Strike. But he did, they did do anything about it even once. But I'm not even trying to blame them. I'm mm. just trying to say that Kanye is a specific type of human being. Mm. You know, and that's why he was saying, so that's why I was saying to you earlier that yeah. for somebody, well, I didn't say it, but I think for somebody who is as famous as Kanye, mm. he has a lot to lose. But it's also the fact that he's so big it's too big to feel so to speak as they say mm. in america mm. that you can't really hold him to something okay you want to say you want to close down his whatever the man has money he's going to be fine one day jp morgan chase chase him out of his 140 million dollars mm. the man will still be fine so that's the thing i'm trying to say mm. but yeah so our mainstream acts don't really have that kind of strong personality they all interviewed with kids in financial times like a year or two years ago mm -hmm. two years or three years ago and he said that he doesn't think that Singing about politics, about politics is important. That is just wasting your time. He said this one very clearly. Mm. <laughs> so that's kind of person. So I don't even think Whiskey fits in. I feel like one, Bonner Boy has the personality. Mm -hmm. Davido has the clout mm -hmm. to be that kind of person. Mm -hmm. But neither of them are doing is that. that kind of. No, and I don't think they have to. I just think that it shall not. It will be nice to be honest. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and again, they don't. They don't look like people who have the same kind of depth. As an ingenuity that Kanye oh, does. Oh, okay. I think Kanye is a really, really he's, he's an asshole, and he <laughs> and he says he doesn't read, but the man is incredibly knowledgeable about things, and he thinks mm. too. By the way, but okay, I'm a big let's, fan of the let's, man. let's let's move. <laughs> let's move. Um, lastly, let's talk about this uh, Mac cosmetics oh, and, and Tiwa Tiwa collaboration. I mean, I was in um, America like a month earlier when I had about this um the release of these products and i went to the max stores like i went to about three max stores two malls and i could not find um the cosmetics so i just assumed i concluded even when i got to the to the airport mm. i still couldn't find it. even when i got to um what's it called um qatar i also did not see it at so i was just wondering I mean, I don't know. So I feel like maybe it's, is it just for Africa? Or, but let's even leave about that. I think that will be a question of distribution and availability when yeah, you want to buy. But let's look at the collaboration itself. I mean, how mm -hmm. impactful would you say this collaboration is? You know, Tiwa Savage and an international brand like Mac. Yeah, I mean, I, I would have to say that we would have to see, to be honest. You know, because I don't think anybody can state directly how effective it will be but in theory i think it should be effective because i, I know that people like tiwa mm. she's possibly the only female musician that has remains incredibly <clears throat> that can even compete with some of the guys mm. she's probably the only one you know mm. that is in nigeria and there's any of course but mm. she's more famous outside of here than inside here maybe yeah so tiwa has that so tiwa has the clout she has the influence and people like her as well mm. so if anybody's going to get it of course, it, it wasn't good to anybody else but Tiwa. As to whether it would now like be the occasion of like this huge hit, the way Fenty, at least in the US, Rihanna's yeah. one has been. Uh -huh. So that one, I don't know because one, I don't know how affordable Mac the product is. Mm -hmm. I don't know that, mm -hmm. you know. And two, I don't know that, unlike Fenty that showed up in a market that was seemed to have been catered, that in a market that was seemed to be heavily catered towards white women. Mm -hmm. 
here was a line from somebody who's a famous black art, artist artist you know um targeting a lot of the black complexion and the black mm. market mm. a lot of products already target the average nigerian mm. woman the way she looks mm -hmm. the way her skin and everything so i do not know what mark <coughs> is bringing that will be new so if i'm using it because of course it's not like they are marketing stuff to people who are supposed to start using makeup just mm -hmm. today so part of what they will try to what they need to do is women who have been using certain products before need to change those products and use the one that ty is fronting for mark, for mark. and you don't think that this is thing, a late, that a change late of, shot? of whatever you say you don't think it's a late shot in terms of where makeup and beauty um production or beauty the beauty market is right now even in nigeria because I mean, we've had people like Zaron who's been catching to the black. That's what I'm saying, exactly. You know. So <coughs> now, if Mark is coming now, you're just waking up to it. Oh, to right. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so, mean, so yeah, so they say, and you're right, because I think two or three years ago, Zaron was really heavy doing like a lot of marketing pushes. Yeah. I used to see there, whatever, somewhere, billboards over, yeah. over here yeah. on, the, on the island. So yeah, so there's that thing. So, but I'm assuming that, that's what I'm saying, yes, that the problem here is that for Fenty, Nothing like this existed. Mm. Suddenly you bring it in. Ah, we may like it. Good. And you're also famous. That helps. Here, yeah, it looks like, I don't know because I don't use makeup, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. know. But <laughs> it looks to me like a lot of what women, Nigerian women need as makeup has been provided by a bunch of other companies. Okay. So to make people shift from what they know to something new because you are famous. Mm. Is what you don't know yeah, okay so you know what i'm, I'm going to do i'm going to talk to a beauty professional who's, <laughs> who's who's very very grounded or who's very informed about the makeup and um, beauty beauty industry. industry and so she'll tell us what this kind of collaboration can mean for the market or for the for the industry generally my name is chicks js and i am a beauty enthusiast and a fashion entrepreneur what do you think about the mac tiwa savage um, lipstick or product collaboration I mean it's exciting I think it's huge I love it it's a big deal in time past Mark has collaborated with the biggest artists like Mara Kari Rihanna all of these people and to have them collaborate with our own African bad girl is such a big deal we love it um, I mean it's 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 very very inspiring so to speak to see that we've gotten to that level where we're global now and it's a big deal. People love Mac, people love Tiwa, so I think it is a very welcome collaboration and long overdue, well deserved as well. I think it's a good one. I mean, in Nigeria, Tiwa Savage is a big deal. Then everywhere else in the world, I know that Tiwa Savage is also a big deal. Beyond that, Mac itself is a giant. It's like the industry giant, as far back as I can remember. That has been like the beauty product that everybody loves. If you had the it girl you need to have that mac makeup so having both of them come together i think is going to be really impactful really powerful and like i said for me it, most importantly it just makes you know that everything is achievable like from using mac makeup then tiwa is now like making mac lipsticks as well and then if you listen to the story behind it it is something that makes her feel confident and happy and this red lipstick for a black girl like i think it's going to be or oh, it already has a huge impact on people i know quite a number of people who are going for the lipstick and we're just very proud proud that okay a girl like me is on the mac lipstick or she made the mac lipstick and we now know it's africa to the world so yes i think it's going to be very very relevant beauty is a big deal anywhere in the world and especially now in nigeria our eyes are very open and we are so like into the whole beauty skincare thing right now even our local brands are doing so well so it is the right time it is a great collaboration and i think it's very impactful and very timely yeah. so i think um we can round it up here we've actually yes, taken yes, more, yes, time more time than, than, we than we <laughs> but um hopefully we hope that you like this show you like the concept that we're trying to pull up this yeah. is the first one like we said and we're going to be getting more um every other week as um, as we've started and we just need the support um forgive us if there's something like if the sound does not come out as great as you yeah, expect it, it at some point we'll lighting some point. and everything but yes yeah. this particular show will be shot or is designed to be to happen in the car so yes so just in case we're actually in the car after the show this is before we leave for our various destinations we'll come out together like this 
and give you guys a show. Exactly. And yes. pa pa pardon my sweat. James James has a freezer inside his soul. So yes, nothing I gets, do. nothing gets so, hot apparently. But look for, at me. Forgive I'm us. Sweating. Forgive for us. Yes, yeah, so yes, but until next, next time. Next time. It's James, James Alice. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.